Okay, so I'm just actually going to go over um, cluster shared volumes and more specifically how the actual I.O. and the networking requirements we have. So I have a basic lab environment configured and rather than whiteboard I'm just going to draw on the screen. So essentially I have some sand storage. So imagine I have storage here. I've then got two servers, O1 and O2. And so I just do one, two. And the way clustered shared volumes works is that one of the nodes acts as a coordinator node for the storage. So although I can access the storage from all of the nodes in the cluster, only one of them actually locally mounts it. So in this case, we're going to say this node here, he's mounting that storage. But because of cluster shared volumes, he can also do certain types of direct I.O. to the disk as well. So they can both access that volume using clustered shared volumes as I talked about in one of my other webinars. So what I want to do is really talk around what network adapters I should really have in this type of environment and how that I.O. actually works. And so what we're actually going to do is I've got a box here. And if I look at the network adapters I have I actually have four networks defined. So I have one network which I'm actually using just for cluster communications. So this is not accessible via clients. It's connected to a separate switch. I don't bind any of the client networks to it. Um, file and print sharing. And it's just on its own subnet. No gateway, nothing. This is just for cluster communications. And that's a dedicated physical NIC on a gigabyte network. I'm using iSCSI, so I have a second network card. Again, it's a physical card just for my iSCSI traffic. And again, that's on a separate switch. Um, this is on the 10.1.1 subnet. Again, not bound to any of the other networks. And that's just for my iSCSI communication. I then have a public NIC. And this public NIC uh, is not enabled for virtual machine switching, so it's not for use by Hyper-V. Notice I've not got virtual network switch enabled. And I have a fourth physical NIC, so these are all physical network cards. And this one is only bound to the virtual network switch. So my virtual machines in Hyper-V will only access this network card. So it's not used locally, there's no uh, additional virtual NIC available on this machine that's bound to this switch. Um, if I actually go into Hyper-V, look at my virtual network manager, I just have one VM network bound to that Realtek, as I showed you before. So, four network cards. If I actually go and open up Task Manager, you'll see four networks. But here's where it gets a little bit confusing. These are not the same networks that you just saw. If you remember the, the networks over here, just shrink that down so you can see them all. I have public NIC, and that relates to my public NIC I have over here, no problem. Cluster NIC relates to this guy. The iSCSI NIC here. My VM switch network interface card does not relate to this local area connection you're seeing here. Because the VM switch is not enabled for local access from this box, it does not show in Task Manager. This is just for use by the Hyper-V machines. So, what is this guy? So the easiest way to check this is if I fire up the command prompt. Let's just close that down. And do ipconfig. Here he is. So he's got a, an automatic IP address assignment. So 
where's this coming from? Well, if I do an ipconfig slash all, it'll actually tell me the driver behind this. And it actually belongs to Microsoft Failover Cluster Virtual Adapter, NetFT, um, the fault tolerant network driver. So this is actually part of the network fault tolerant driver that's used by the cluster for its communication. And so that's why we have this additional network adapter. Do not worry about this address. It doesn't actually get used. What happens is this failover cluster virtual adapter binds to one of the physical network cards. Now, which one it binds to uh, does actually vary. But in 2008, it was pretty arbitrary. In 2008 R2, it actually bases it on some metrics that are assigned to network adapters in your machine. An easy way to actually see which one it's bound to is to just try a copy of data. So, cluster shared volumes, remember, let's go back to our picture. The whole point of CSV is even though this guy mounts the iSCSI, which obviously physically resides on this guy here, so that's just a, a mount. This node over here also can see that story.